Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Mail Enhancement with Mail Hanger podcast. I'm your host, Ben of MailHanger.com. Welcome. In this episode, we're going to be talking about penis weight hanging. Why in the world you would want to hang weights from your penis to enlarge it? My personal experiences with it. And more specifically, I'm going to clearly outline the type of weight hanging that I personally teach called compression hanging. I'll tell you about my own personal experiences like like I just said a moment ago, as well as compare it to vacuum hanging, using your hands to stretch. But first, the usual disclaimer. I'm Ben Clark of MailHanger.com. I'm not a licensed medical professional of any kind. I don't hold any special licenses, in other words. Uh, I'm not even a physical therapist. Basically, I'm just a guy who's been around this stuff since 1999. I've got a lot of first-hand experience. My own anecdotal story, uh, working with others over the years since 2012 with products like my mail hanger device. So anything that you hear or see in one of these podcast episodes, me talking about, showing you, blah, 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 don't take it to heart, so to speak, or use it in your own personal life as first-hand information that you should apply to your own body in some certain way. Because if you do, that's on you and you alone. I don't take any responsibility for that. That said, let's get on with the episode. So, first of all, why in the world would anyone want to hang weights from their penis to make it bigger? I know it sounds crazy at first, like some sort of weird self-torture, but actually it's one of the most effective, time-efficient, and safest ways to enlarge your penis, from my experience and what I've seen. So one of the main reasons I typically suggest penis weight hanging to people is, honestly, number one for me, safety. I know it may not sound like something safe to do at first, especially to the uninitiated, somebody who's never heard of or seen this kind of stuff before, um, but hanging weights from your penis, usually considered to be one of your most prized body parts. I know it sounds dangerous at first. <laughs> Believe me, I get it. But let's take some a moment to consider some things um, about penis weight hanging compared to Maybe some of the other methods you might have heard or seen. First of all, in my opinion, one of the most important things to consider about penis weight hanging is that you always know, always know, I'll repeat that again, you always know exactly how much resistance you're using because you can literally see the resistance you're using by way of weight plates that are attached to your hanging device, which is attached to your penis. You're not guessing, in other words. If you've done any sort of research into penis enlargement, or perhaps maybe you've tried some of the techniques that have you stretching with your hands, you know stretching with your hands is 100% guesswork, period. You can't honestly tell me from one stretch to the next you're pulling with two pounds of resistance, and then, I don't know, tell me what a good stretch feels like. Is it five pounds? You can't tell me because you're using your hands. <laughs> so, when we're talking about your penis, again, one of your most important parts of your body, usually if you have one, do you really want to be guessing <laughs> how much you're resistant, how much resistance you're applying to it, especially in the beginning if you've never done this kind of stuff before? I know I sure as hell wouldn't. In fact, if you've ever spent any time on any penis enlargement or men's health related forums where they're talking about this kind of stuff, I dare you to spend an hour, maybe two hours if you have the time, do some reading around. Google search penis enlargement injuries, penis enlargement or penis stretching injuries. Just the first term, penis enlargement injuries should turn up a slew of manual related, using your hands exercises, in other words, manual stretching is usually what it's called, injuries. Very, very few injuries related in comparison to weight hanging. I guarantee it. Period. Since 1999, when I've, as long as I've been around this stuff, 
seeing it firsthand myself, my own firsthand interactions with the techniques, I've tried literally all of them that you can Google and find that are out there. Never hurt myself with weights. I've had some minor injuries along the way though with my hands, period. So that's a lot to consider right there. So, <laughs> I gotta gather my thoughts a second. Why not just start out doing things right the first time? <sighs> I had to re-wet the palate, sorry. So, some of the penis weight hanging method, the main penis weight hanging, let's talk about that, the method I teach with male hanger called compression, or progressive weight hanging. The main concept behind progressive weight hanging is controlled, steady weight progression over time. When most people learn about weight hanging, they learn the basics like how to put on their device, whatever type it is, whether it's a vacuum device, some sort of homemade contraption that they read about online, or something like my product, Mail Hanger. It takes a little time for them to learn how to do that first, and then they start playing around with the weights. They'll usually start with a, a pretty low weight at first, and then they'll slowly progress over time, work up to a weight of around 10 pounds, and then they usually stop and never go any heavier. Um, now, don't get me wrong here, especially early on, 10 pounds is a lot of weight when your penis is just now starting to get adapted to something like this. Even one pound in the beginning will feel incredibly heavy, believe it or not. Um, we all have to remember where we came from, so to speak. <laughs> And I remember back then, the very first time I ever put any kind of weight on my penis, it was about five pounds. It was a, I did something really goofy just off the top of my head. I was like, ooh, weight hanging. That sound, that, well, yeah, that sounds better than my hands. I didn't know any better. I took a long tube sock, basically, tied one into my penis, believe it or not. I was not erect. I was completely flaccid like you're supposed to be. Tied the other end of this five-pound dumbbell I had and... Thankfully, I didn't drop the weight. I just kind of slowly lowered it down, but it was incredibly heavy. I was like, no, 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 no. There's got to be a better way to do this. So <laughs> thankfully, I got back on one of the forums that I belonged to back in the day and did some more reading about it, actually educated myself. The rest is history. So here I am today, thankfully uninjured because I learned how to do it the right way. However, the penis getting back on topic and the connective tissues like the ligaments, that attach it to your pubic bone adapt to resistance fairly quickly and continue to do so usually over time as you go. So after a while that given weight you've worked up to again let's say 10 pounds provides less and less resistance to those same tissues. Your penis may not look like it's changed much from the outside but internally it has. It's adapted to the resistance that you've been applying to it over time as you've been going along. So yes as you go along you need to continue to add resistance. Pretty simple. I forget what grade school level I was in school when I learned this kind of stuff. It's basic physics, if I remember it right. The same resistance or load applied to an object over time. Let's say you're trying to stretch a rope and you, you have 10 pounds on the end of it. You keep that 10 pounds on there for 20 minutes. It's still the same 10 pounds. And if it's an unstretchable rope, it's not going to stretch any farther. You're also not applying any different resistance to it, no matter how long the weight stays on there. The resistance is going to stay the same. Similar concept in overall theory, at least. So, let's say you've been hanging for a while with hopefully a product like Mail Hanger. <laughs> Shameless plug. It's been six to eight months down the road, and now that 10 pounds is no longer giving the same stretch to the tissues in your penis that it once did. This is due to something called tissue adaptation. Now, many in the online penis enlargement community seem to think the solution is simply adding more and more hanging time to your sessions rather than adding weight, like I tend to teach. However, again, just simply adding more time with that Again, 10 pound weight as our example, is not gonna increase the resistance on the tissues. And therefore, if they're already adapted to that weight level of 10 pounds, 
simply going from an hour of total time per day, for example, to two or three hours. Good God, how, who has that, long, that kind of time anyway, right? Every day of the week to hang two or three hours. I know I don't, so I keep my sessions short and, you know, do it the smart way, in my opinion. It just makes a whole hell of a lot more sense long term to hang progressively, like I said. That's what I call it, and that's why I call it that. So ideally, you want to start always, you always want to be using a weight level that creates a sensation in your penis called tissue fatigue. Now, tissue fatigue, who, for those of you who have been more friends, any kind of running, weightlifting, later on that day or maybe the next day, something called soreness, lactic acid induced muscle soreness sets in. It's a similar feeling when you stretch your penis and those connective tissues, the ligaments. By the next day, sometimes later that day, but usually by the next day, you'll feel a mild kind of a dull ache sensation. Never pain. Pain is always bad. If you do things how I teach them, you should never have pain. But you're looking for, that's what the tissue fatigue is. With weight hanging, tissue fatigue also causes you to need, require, with a capital R, you to lower weight um, while you're u at some point during your week. So let's say your, your routine usually starts on Monday, like mine does. I hang Monday morning through Friday, okay? So three sets of 20 minutes a day, for my personal example, five days a week is my hanging schedule. You, that may sound like French to you at the moment. That's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm just going by examples here. So... Ideally, the way I teach progressive hanging, you should start your session on Monday with your current highest weight. Let's say it's 15 pounds, okay? <laughs> you're already Superman. You're hanging 15 pounds. Great. Good for you. Good job. So, Monday you start your first set with 15 pounds. You make it through all three of your sets Monday. Same deal on Tuesday. You hang all three sets. You're starting to feel a little bit of a sensation of, you know, uh, on that third set on Tuesday, I kind of barely pushed it, almost didn't make it to the full 20 minutes. Great. Wednesday morning, when you do your hanging, after that first set, you feel like you just got to go lower in weight, at least a pound. That's awesome. That's where your tissue fatigue is starting to set in. That's what you're looking for every week as you go along. No later than Wednesday or the third day of your week, you should be feeling like you got to lower that weight by at least a pound. If you're not feeling that, you're not hanging heavy enough, period. And the following Monday, not that Wednesday, don't try to go up and wait that Wednesday because you'll probably hurt yourself or cause extra tissue fatigue and then actually delay your progress long term. You'll want to wait until Monday, finish your week however you can. You may need to lower weight, let's, let's say Wednesday, lower it a little more Thursday and Friday, but then the following Monday, try to go up a pound. So instead of 15 pounds the next Monday, you try 16, you're probably gonna be able to do it. And then starting over the next Monday, you'll go 16 pounds, hopefully all three of your sets. Tuesday, maybe the first two sets, maybe three, all of your sets Tuesday, and then Wednesday, you should definitely see the need to lower your weight by the first, maybe the second set. That's how it's supposed to work. Of course, if it, it may take you, if, especially if you've come from another method like some manual stretching or something before you got to progressive hanging with male hanger, you may need a little more time, a little more weight to start getting into the groove, so to speak, with progressive hanging. That's where I come in online, my life support chat, um, emailing me through my support email. If you need to help get your mind right, so to speak, and dial things in. So basically, you don't want to be sailing through every week with the same weight like a lot of people do online. You'll see vacuum hangers especially because I've had two blisters, two blisters the whole time I've been around this stuff and they were from me overexerting, trying to be overzealous, um, once with a penis pump and then once with a vacuum hanging device and I said that was it for me. I found a better way to hang, thankfully, compression hanging. But a lot of times you'll see these vacuum hangers online who are trying to, rather than, like I was talking about earlier, 
ping progressively, they'll stop at 10 pounds because they know listers are going to be a problem soon. And they just keep trying to add more and more time to the days that they do hang. And they basically run into the same problem, the same plateau issue again and again and again, trying to avoid those blisters, trying to add more time to their day. It becomes this weird pattern, and then they eventually give up and say this stuff doesn't work, or quit working for them, or they need a decon break, or, you know, if you hang out around these forums, you'll know what I'm talking about. But eventually, if you keep at it, you'll, you'll find your working weight, as I call it. So again, like that 15-pound weight range, maybe 16 pounds, and then you'll hit that progressive, you'll hit that tissue fatigue every week. You basically want to hit fatigue and then ride it, so to speak. So riding the fatigue basically means what I was talking about earlier. You start your Monday with, again, our 16-pound weight example. You hit that tissue fatigue where you got to lower it. There's no way around it. You definitely have to lower your weight by it. absolutely need to, to continue your hanging each day of the, that week. And any time you can make it past Wednesday with your current weight, again, it's time to raise the weight on Monday the follow, of the following week. So this is progressive hanging in a nutshell. Um, and again, I'm available on my support email on my site, my live support chat, which is even better, honestly, because there's me as well as people from all over the world, literally now, who are using MailHanger. Circumcised guys, uncircumcised people. Again, from all different time zones, so it's really awesome. Pretty much any time of day, you pop on my live support chat, ask a question. It's usually answered within minutes, maybe a few hours at most for better clarification of everything. So now contrary, with an accent, I'm sorry, contrary to how some, how some people might think, you won't constantly be adding weight week after week after week. Um, I don't know where that belief comes from. All of a sudden, I've seen people say, well, if I do it like you teach, still want more, or, or Ben, um, still want more is my screen name on some of these forums, as it has been for several years. I'll be hanging 40 pounds in a year. Uh, well, no, this isn't a spreadsheet math class kind of thing. No, you won't be. If you are, you're probably an idiot and probably going to hurt yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but that's just reality. Use your head. No, if you hang like I teach, you won't be hanging some ridiculous amount of weight within a year. I myself, I've been out of this game, so to speak, for about 16 years. Just resumed weight hanging on my own with my device, Mail Hanger. This past October, so the last few months up until this recording date of April 14th, and I'm still working with only, let's see, my last weight I used was 22 pounds, okay? So just as an example, you do eventually get to a point where your weight progression slows down, and you basically just focus on maintaining tissue fatigue every week and trying to add weight when you can, but never force the weight. You should never hit... A time where you constantly battle pain or borderline ride pain and not pain you know don't be stupid don't hurt yourself don't break your penis simple as that one of the things I've heard people say over the years and so it must be a concern or it wouldn't be said is that um, basically there's this concern of, well, I'm only ever going to hang a certain amount of weight, and if that doesn't work, I'm going to quit. Well, I'm sorry, but reality says, if you have come from other penis enlargement methods, I alluded to this earlier, you may, in fact, need to hang heavier weights than some people might due to having pre-existing tissue adaptation. So, get over it, buddy. By the way, I do practice what I teach. I myself, if you haven't caught on already, use my progressive hanging method. And I pretty much always have. I can attest to the fact that it works from personal experience on my own as well as, I mean, I've gained so far, again, as of this recording date, 
a little over two inches on my own erect size flaccid as well. In fact, I'm actually working toward two and a half. Last I measured, I was at two, a little over two and a quarter inches gained. So one more thing I want to cover in this episode before we call it a wrap is vacuum hanging. Touched a little bit on that earlier and how it compares to what's known as compression and progressive hanging with a device like my mail hanger. So it sounds like vacuum hanging involves the use of, of like it sounds, I should say, tripped over my words a little bit there, sorry. Like it sounds, vacuum hanging does in fact involve the use of a vacuum attachment device. It looks like a cup. Um, basically, it goes over the, the, the front of your penis. You could imagine a little plastic like a baby bottle. You can actually get on some of these Chinese import sites. AlliExpress.com is a really good one. And look up Chinese cupping therapy, okay? And believe it or not, a lot of uh, more industrious types on the internet have taken these Chinese cupping therapy devices and turned them into penis weight hanging devices. That should be kind of a red flag for you. Honestly, in my opinion, it is because when, when, when you retrofit something that's not designed to work on the penis to work on the penis, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a good idea. But inside that vacuum cup, after you place it on your penis, very simply put, it creates a suction or a vacuum inside of it. And ideally, it holds on to the end of your penis and you can suspend weights from it now. Um, with lower weights, usually under 12 pounds, these devices tend to work fairly well, especially for the complete newbie who's never done anything to their penis before to try and stretch it and make it longer. In fact, uh, they give a very similar, if not identical, result to compression hanging. However, as you increase weight, put more weight on that vacuum hanging device, you also tend to dramatically increase the weight, the vacuum inside of that, that cup or vacuum hanging device. And another fun little fact is that most of these devices that are sold online, these vacuum hangers, don't have a way of measuring or a gauge on them. There's no hose connection like you might see if you've ever looked at penis pumps. A lot of the better quality penis pumps will have the pump tube itself and then there's a, a hand operated, it looks like a, a mighty vac. Any of you more mechanical minded types who've worked around cars, Blake, a brake bleeding pump. You'll know what I'm talking about. You can also look that up online if you're curious and don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but usually the brake bleeding pump has a gauge on it, lets you know what kind of vacuum you have inside your, your pump that you're using. The better quality vacuum hangers also have these. However, most of them do not because they're trying to appeal to a larger audience, potential customer base with a cheap product. And unfortunately, cheap products are not good products most of the time in this market. So after you reach a certain point, usually around 12 pounds with one of these vacuum devices, um, that, act, that, that vacuum inside that cup goes up to who the hell knows what. Um, the last time I played around with one that had a gauge on it, I put, I think it was 15 pounds on it, and the vacuum inside went up to over 15 HG, which is really damn high. In fact, most experienced penis pumpers will tell you they never go as high as that and for good reason. That's a lot of excess vacuum on your glands, which is the head or the bell end, as some of our friends in the UK might call it, of their penis. Some of the most sensitive skin on your body, second maybe to your nipples, honestly. I know that might make you giggle, some of you out there, but that's the truth. And you don't want to be applying excess vacuum to that type of skin because you're going to get blisters. And blisters are gross, <laughs> honestly. They look like STDs. If you want to, if you want to be grossed out and or have a giggle sometime, Google search or DuckDuckGo search, penis blisters, and never mind what your partner might think. Okay, so my penis, my choice, <laughs> compression hanging, please. I don't want to have to explain a blister, and I know most of you out there don't want to go through that either. Not only that, but every time you get a blister on your penis, you must stop doing what you're doing, whether it's pumping or vacuum hanging, usually for around two weeks until that thing completely heals, if it's just one, hopefully. 
and that can be a major setback in steady progress every time it happens. So again, I don't know about you out there, listening, watching, I like to do things right the first time as often as I can, whenever I can, and so I'd rather just compression hang, use a product like Mail Hanger in the first place, avoid blisters, avoid limitations, so on and so forth. So wrapping it up everybody, thanks again for watching, thanks again for listening, please remember to like, subscribe, comment down below, I do answer questions and reply to comments. If you're listening to me on an audio platform, please leave me a review or a rating if you can. That helps me there. And until the next episode, thank you. We'll see you then. Have a great day.